the Great Search brought to you by DigiKey Native Fruit. Thanks so much, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you, yes, you find the things you are looking for. What are you looking for this week, Lady Ada? Okay, um, so this week we've got um, this WLED board that we're making, and one of the things that's cool about it is you can have like a wide range of input voltages. So it can be five to 20 volts on the USB because we're using power delivery to get um, like a lot of current from like a laptop charger, which a lot of people have, which would be nice because then you don't have to like get, sometimes getting 24 volt or 12 volt five amp power supplies, it can be pricey and USB-C is like ready to go. And um, like you said, it can recycle an existing power supply that you have. Also, they come in like so many different shapes and sizes and like polarities. I'm not, makes things easier. Um, you know, the problem is, is that a lot of WLED boards actually only have one power input and that kind of solves a lot of issues because if you only have one power input, you don't have to worry about them like conflicting. Um, like, you know, in theory, people would only plug in one of these, but in reality, people don't. People like make mistakes and, and whatever you do, you don't want to have this USB connected to your computer while this is powering it with 24 volts and the 24 volts like feeds back into your computer and explodes your motherboard, right? So you have to be super, super duper careful when you're dealing with high voltages um, not to feed them back. And so there's two options for dealing with this. Well, there's like, you could do like a hot swap chip and they do exist, but the problem is is that the current and voltage I'm dealing with are five amps at 24 volts and actually there's not a lot of inexpensive chips that do that. I did find one like hot swap power controller from Linear Tech, um, which is now analog devices. And it's, to nobody's surprise, it's like $8. So I'm like, and that's like triple the cost of the bill of materials, right? So, so I'm not gonna use that. Um, another thing we could use is a ideal diode. So we have in the shop, and maybe I'll cover this in another show because it's like, there's two ways of solving this. The ideal diode is kind of neat because it's a silicon chip, and in this case, it has a built-in MOSFET or two MOSFETs, and you can have two inputs, one and two, and the output will be the higher of each, and you can sort of set priorities and stuff. But what's cool is that the forward voltage is really, really small. Normally, um, you would have a forward voltage of like you know half a volt to maybe you know 0.3 volts to maybe like half a volt or 0.7 volts. But this one has an RDS on of 40 milliohms, which if you know you do four milliohms times 2.5 amps gives you a 0.1 volt forward drop, which is awesome, especially when you're dealing with such small voltages. Because if you have like 3.3 volts and 4.2 volts, you don't want to lose half a volt. That's like now you've lost like 20% of your power to the diode. Um, but the issue is, is that this one is limited to five volts max. It's really designed for 1.8 to, to five volts, um, small, you know, microcontroller projects, batteries, USB, etc. Whereas, like I said, this design, we're dealing with 24 volts, 20 volts, five amps. So 100 watts of power. That's a lot of power. Um, so one thing I did look at is using, you know, and I searched DigiKey to find this, and then maybe again, I'll do another one, is you can get these ideal diodes, you have to use an external FET because this is for high current, but this can handle up to 65 volts um, as long as one of the voltages is above 3.9. So that's cool, because like that's 65 over 24, and um, drives an external FET. And the only thing is you need two of these, two FETs. You know, I do like that there's an enable and disable for the power, that's kind of neat. Um, I, I would have liked that, but um, the problem with this is that for this design specific, the cost is, starts to balloon and the space starts to balloon a little bit too because you need two chips, two FETs. I'm still thinking about it. I might, I might change my mind, but I was actually thinking to start with just having a plane or diode. And here's the, my reasoning is I would like to reduce the, the power as much as possible, but I feel like <clears throat> even at five volts, because of the LED drivers that you're talking about, they can run at like 4.5 pretty much okay. So as long as you have like a good clean five volts in, if you're running it at five amps and you're drawing, um, if you're, sorry, if you're drawing five amps at five volts and you drop down to like 4.5 uh, volts, 
that should be fine to drive your like gigantic NeoPixels. But if you really, really wanted to drive that many NeoPixels at such high currents, such as like five amps or above, and you're having like, first off, you're gonna have voltage droop issues in general because like if you're drawing that much current along an LED strip, um, it'll just the strip itself is not that thick. It's like it's like half ounce copper. It doesn't last very long, and so you'll want to go to 12 volt strips, and so that's when it's like, okay, well, losing a half volt isn't a big deal. Um, second, if you are going to have huge amount, if you want like 10 amps at five volts because you have maybe multiple LED strips and each one is like, you know, not that long, I would use something like a, a bus bar, which I've totally used for NeoPixel products. And these are great because it's just a gigantic chunk of metal and you put all the red wires for the NeoPixels in, you, you power it, and then uses your distribution. And, you know, it's very mechanical and manual, but, like, it's awesome for high current power distribution. So I thought instead what I would do is I would find um, Shockey diodes, you said instead of the ideal diodes, which I think if I was doing a, you know, if, if this is very popular and people are like, no, I really want an upgraded version, I think I could upgrade it. Um, but to keep it small and simple... I would go with Shockey diodes. And <coughs> what I usually use um, Shockey diodes for is like if we have a feather. My size is. I don't know. Let me find one of my feathers. Okay. Um, where is the diode? Okay, so here is the, the Shockey diode. This is like a one amp 20 volt diode to protect the USB voltage from going back. I think I don't remember. Like, yeah, I think it's from back powering to the USB if the um, LiPo is plugged in. And traditionally I use ones that are like one amp 20 volts. 20 volts is kind of the minimum you can get anyways. But one amp, so it's kind of like, do they even like make low forward voltage um, chalky diodes at five, five amps and up to like 30 volts. And I was like, let's go to DigiKey and find out. So let's see what we can find for 24 volts or higher. It's not that high for a shocky, to be honest. And five amps or higher. And I want the lowest forward drop, ideally under a half an amp. And then I also want to minimize my um, reverse leakage current. So let's look at diodes. Diode, start easy. So we're going to get single diodes, and let's start with active, as you may expect. So there's 32,000. Um, so the reverse digit, like I said, I want it to be at least 24 volts, so let's just search. I mean, this goes up to like infinite. Whoa, 25,000 volts. That's a lot of volts. That's okay. We'll just select all of them. <clears throat> And then um, I'm like pretty sure I want Shockey, but like I'm just going to, you know, ignore the technology because what's important to me is I want the average rectified current that it can handle to be at least five amps. So let's let's just select. Kind of goes into a ridiculous number of amps. Okay, and then what's really going to reduce the size is a lot of the um, dives, especially at the high range, are going to be through hole. So let's look for or chassis mount. Like if you're handling, like what was it, like 15,000 amps, it's going to be chassis mount. Let's look for surface mount only. And yeah, that's going to like, that's like, oh, that's like one third are going to be surface mount. Okay, next up, like I said, that forward voltage. Um, so the only thing that's a little annoying is it's like, it's like the at current changes, but I found that you know, I want it to be less than 500, so I'm just going to select 500 or less and then sort out what is available. Okay, so what's nice is that we're down to like a, a reasonable number. Um, so what's cool is now we're talking... Let me shrink it up. Okay. 40 volt, 5 amp, 30 volt, 5 amp. These look really good. And the 4 voltages, voltages are not too bad either. Um, 360 millivolts is quite nice, right? Because it's, you know, will vary with temperature as well. 
But one thing that did uh, strike me is that there's a significant difference in the reverse leakage current. And the reverse leakage current is, so if we have like one power supply coming in here, another one coming, or this one is not connected or disconnected. Let's say we have five volts USB here. We have 24 volts DC here. This voltage at the junction will be 24 volts because it's the higher of the two. But there is some current that will leak back. It's not a perfect diode. Ideal diodes aren't kind of ideal, but they're more expensive. Some of that high voltage will leak back and you want to minimize it. And there's always going to be some, but eight milliamps is like quite a bit. I don't really want that 24 volts to leak back at eight milliamps. That's actually like starting to get into a destructive amount. You want to keep it at under, under a milliamp for sure. So I'm also going to look at the reverse leakage current. And I'm going to say I want one milliamp or less. I don't even want a milliamp, I want less than that. But it's it's a bit of a trade-off cost, forward voltage, reverse current, volt, you know, there's all these things are, are are something you have to balance. Okay, so let's now look. All right, so uh, voltage, you know, it's cool, whatever the higher voltage is. Um, and so the most important thing to me, given that we have everything else be equal, and they're all going to be over 30 volts, they're all going to be over 5 amps, is I want to minimize the forward voltage. So let's sort by forward voltage. And we actually have a couple good options here. Um, let's look for ones that are in stock. Might as well. Okay. Um, it's SK4054 series. Let's also not look at um, marketplace ones. So I'm only looking at stuff that's in stock right now. Uh, there's these like chunky ones, SMCs. I will say I've used um, the PMEG series and I've been, I'm a fan of them. They're very good and they have very low um, reverse leakage. So I kind of like that. SL54, so a lot, there's actually quite a few good options here, which I like. And, you know, not all of them are shocking. Like this one's called like a super barrier, which is kind of cool. Um, well, this one's really nice. It has only 450 milliamps at 10 amps and 300 micro volt, micro amps at 50 volts. That's like pretty cool. This is a power DI. And the prices are a little expensive, but they're not, they're not too much. Um, To really know which one to pick, although I'm kind of leaning towards that one. That one's like pretty sweet. It's a little big though, maybe, but let's look at the data sheet real fast. So let's look at the, yeah, so there's going to be the um, instantaneous forward voltages. So at five, so this is logarithmic, so at five amps, at worst, you're going to hit 450 milliamps. So yeah, this is like, this is kind of a nice option. And then it can handle up to 10 amps of current, which might be nice, although we're gonna fuse it. So I'm actually kind of thinking maybe I'll do this one. This is not a bad, not, not a bad choice. Okay, I think I'm going to look at this one. This is a, this is, it's a little bit overkill, but I kind of like it. There also might be ones in the other family. So I think right now, although I have to like compare and contrast all of these, She's just a couple of tan amp ones over here. Oh, they're all gonna be these kind of big, big sizes. Anyways, I like this one. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is my first choice. Let's do the Diodes Incorporated. SBRT 10U50, 10 amp 50 volt, power DI5 package diode. In socket, Digikey. And that's a great search. Wait.